everyone, it's Maddie. And me, and today we're going to be doing our Yelk book haul. We took a lot of books with us, but we came away with tons as well, and thank goodness we had half of suitcases left to fill, because we have 32 books to show you. Let's get to it. We'll divide the stack into books that we paid for, and then books that we got for free from proof tables or giveaways. So before the actual event, because we had some time to kill in the train station, we went to the Waterstones to see what they had there on offer. We just filled up the stamp card, where if you collect 10 stamps, you get £10 off your next purse. Purchase. So we decided that was the perfect reason to get two books on the buy one get one half price table. So I picked up If Birds Fly Back by Carly Sorosiak and this was a book that we'd heard great things about from people reading the proof copy and this finished copy is just so gorgeous and we're a real big fan of these colours. And it's also a book that we had the opportunity to get signed at Yelk. And I picked up Blood for Blood, the sequel and final in the Wolf by Wolf duology by Ryan Gralden. This was pre-signed so it just says brace yourself. And I was going to take it to then get dedicated for her signing on Sunday but then it felt like too much extra weight so this was just swimming about in a suitcase for three days but I'm still really glad that I have it. So with our deal we managed to get both of these books for two pounds. Next I have Whisper to Me by Nick Lake and this is one that I saw in Waterstones maybe six months ago and the cover was so gorgeous I had to have it but it was published in 2016 so of course it wasn't going to be on any offer tables so when it was on the Bloomsbury table for five pounds I decided I definitely had to get it and this was sort of a last minute plunge on the final day we hadn't really spent any money throughout the time on books so I knew if I was going to walk away with anything it should be this one. Then we have Stags by M.A. Bennett which we bought from the Hockey Books table for a fiver. This was one of their most hyped releases over the weekend and we actually got to meet the author on that day which was completely serendipitous. So this is the story of a society that the main character has been invited to and on the front it says nine students, three blood sports, one deadly weekend and that just sounded insane and like I had to know what happens. The also four words that describe the book are invitation, kiss, hunting, and Betrayal. So hopefully this is one I'm going to be getting to really really soon. Then Penguin had a two for ten pounds deal so we decided to go for The Upside of Unrequited by Becky Albertelli. We have Simon versus the Homo Sapiens Agenda and we thought we were never going to get this for cheaper anywhere. We also have a Kindle edition of this because we have the galley but Maddie hasn't read it so why not get it in paperback. Then we also got The Miseducation of Cameron Post which is just now being published in the UK even though this was at our local library and I think I've read like the first 50 pages and couldn't get into it. It's one I wanted to add to our collection because it's one of the earliest FF romances I think. So I can't wait to get around to this one even though it's absolutely huge. I think it will be a great one for next summer. Then at the end of the weekend we treated ourselves to a copy of Unboxed by Non Pratt. This is our favourite of all her books but the one that we didn't own and so I really wanted to get it signed by her but we missed that day but luckily she signed a bunch after. Also this was a pound less expensive than I thought it would be and even though I only paid £7 for it they let me have a stamp on the must spend £10 Waterstones card anyway so it was a win win. Next we have Vanishing Girls by Lauren Oliver. Again this is one Maddie has on her Kindle but the chapter 5 books were doing a giveaway of books for £2 so we decided to get it because that's probably what we'd pay in a charity shop. This is the story of sisters Nick and Dara and they're both going after the same boy and it completely tears them apart. Then Dara disappears on her birthday and Nick is left wondering what the hell has happened. Next we have a selection of books that we got from the HQ table, the first being Editing Emma by Chloe Seeger. This we only got for a pound because we waited until the very last second when they were doing their slash sales and so normally a paperback would be a fiver so it was really great and I think loads of people were just shoveling books into their hands. This was also one of their most hyped releases over the weekend. They had huge posters and a lot of people talking about it and it's one that I saw on NetGalley and was slightly interested in but didn't actually click request. This is about Emma who's just broken up with her boyfriend and decides to cyberstalk him but she realises that that's kind of bad for her mental health so she decides to start a blog in order to help her move on and then I think it spirals down from there as it gets more and more serious and more people find it. Maddie was just lingering at that table and she'd already picked up two books and I was like wait get this one for me too please. This is Kook by Chris Vick and I think I heard some buzz about this in the UKY community like a couple of years ago when it came out. And it's the story of Sam who moves from the big city to the coast with his mother and sister and now he's got like no friends and then he meets Jade who is an adrenaline junkie surfer and they fall in love and Jade's one mission is to get on this huge wave. I thought it was going to be more of a thriller than a romance but I'm going to keep my expectations low and hope it gives me some blue water high vibes. Next we have Not That Kind of Girl by Siobhan Vivian. This one was also a pound and they had a bunch of Siobhan Vivian's books there but this is the one that I was most interested in. I've seen it on a few Waterstones tables and picked it up because the first line of the blurb is she's avoided boys, always topped her class and is poised to become the first female student council president in years and I was like yes 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 that's all great and then the next line is but being the good girl isn't always easy and then she like a boy comes into 
her life. And I was like, oh, I'm not really interested in that story anymore. But because it was only a pound and I also saw it on a feminist recommendation list, I thought, why not just give it a chance? So those were all of the books that we bought. And now we're going to go for all of the ones that we got for free. So the first book we picked up was The Fandom by Anna Day. And this was from Chicken House and all you had to do was sign up to their newsletter. So this is about a bunch of friends who go to a Comic-Con and then sort of fall through a portal that lands them in the world that they love in their favourite fantasy series. This is a story that came from the Big Ideas competition. So whilst Anna Day wrote the fandom, the idea or concept behind this is actually attributed to Angela McCann. It doesn't come out until January 2018 though, so might not be getting around to it super quickly, but I can't wait because fandom books I've been slightly disappointed in recently, so hopefully if I give them a rest for a bit I can enjoy this one immensely. Next we have Ice Like Fire by Sarah Ratch, and I actually won this from the Very Loot giveaway that they were doing. We had to do was spin a rainbow wheel and each colour corresponded with a different prize, and orange just happened to be a book that day. But I was laughing that I got it first thing Friday because it's really chunky and I had to carry it around all day. Then we have This Mortal Coil by Emily Suvada, and this was from The Penguin Table. They had so many arcs at the very beginning and because we were like some of the first 50 people into the venue and we got through very quickly when we were going around we kind of had a free-for-all on any arcs that we wanted that they were just giving away. We later found out that it was a sci-fi story which kind of puts me off a bit but I am still looking for that sci-fi book that really resonates with me. So far all I found is Lauren James. On the front it says three billion lives at stake, two people who can save them and one secret hidden in their DNA. Next we have The Truth and Lies of Ella Black by Emily Barr who wrote The One Memory of Flora Banks and this is one that I wasn't even expecting to see because I hadn't heard any news of her writing her second book. This is again another January release for 2018 but it's one I think I'm gonna get to super soon because I loved Flora Banks so much and the vibe that it gave me and the pace of the book was really incredible that I'm really excited to see what happens in this one. Apparently it's set in Brazil whereas Flora was set in Iceland so I'm excited for that change of setting. I've never read something from there before and I hope I like it as much as her debut. Next I have The Hazelwood by Melissa Albert and this again was one of the most hyped books they had at Yelp this year. I had seen it on NetGalley only available for the US and obviously I was crying about that so when I saw it available in a real copy I had to pick one up. It's the story of Alice who's always traveling about with her mother but then her grandmother who's the author of some dark fairy tales dies on her estate the Hazel Wood. Then I'm pretty sure it gets similar to Inkheart where maybe Alice is then transported into that world and on the back it's already saying that it's bought by Sony Pictures for a major film release so everyone was hyping this. If I haven't convinced you enough the tagline is also imagine if Marvel did fairy tales so hopefully you can get your hands on one of these very soon too. Next we have Undercover Princess the first book in the Rosewood Chronicles by Connie Glynn who also goes by Nudarella on YouTube and we really love her channel so we were so pumped to see this and I'd say that there were only like 30 copies on the table and as soon as they were gone they were just replaced by chapter samplers so the only day you could get this was Friday and so it was really magical to get a copy because it's one that we didn't know was going to be there and one that we've been really excited for and would have bought otherwise. I've actually already started reading it and I'm about 30 pages through and already I think I'm gonna have to do like a whole video of my thoughts on it. It's about this girl called Lottie who moves from her small town to attend Rosewood which is a really elite academy that her mother went to. There she's sharing a room with an actual real life princess and it's all about their relationship together and the adventures that they get up to. Next we have The Sacrifice Box by Martin Stewart, author of Riverkeep. Apparently it's reminiscent of Stranger Things. I'm not sure if that's because it's about a group of boys set in the 80s that might be the only tenuous link they have but it still sounds like it's going to be exciting. Their names kind of get to me though. It's Sep, Arkle, Mac, Lamb and Hadley and these five friends go into the woods and they find this stone box so they all decide to sacrifice something into it and the rules are that they can never reclaim their sacrifice. Four years later weird things start happening in their town and it looks like someone's broken the rules. Next we have a copy of There's Someone Inside Your House by Stephanie Perkins. This was at the My Kind of Book stand and on the floor they had these suitcases full of tiny chapter samplers and then kind of behind the suitcases little stacks of this book. So it was almost a secret but loads of people kept crowding around to see if they would be there and they were giving these out throughout the weekend but we were one of the first to get it. This is one that we actually had an e-copy of and we already read it before the convention so it's really great to already own it because although it was a step outside of Stephanie Perkins comfort zone it also felt really familiar because there's a huge romance thread throughout. Next we have Blackbird by N.D. Gomez and this is another story where a sister goes missing, this time it's an older sister. It also says in the top, my name is Alex, I'm 15 years old and I don't know where my sister is or if she will ever come back. On New Year's Eve, 5,000 blackbirds 
dropped dead the same day Olivia McCarthy went missing from a small coastal village. So I have no idea how the blackbirds actually play into it. It also says it's a psychological thriller, so I think this is going to be another one sitting read, and I can't wait to see how this mystery unravels. Next we have Eden Summer, which was the one and only book we picked up from the Hockey Book Exchange table. We had a second copy of the fandom, but it was a tiny bit battered, and then when I saw this and knew that Liz Flanagan was also going to be at Yalk, I thought this was the perfect opportunity to get it signed. This is also the original proof copy from 2013, and it has her signature stamped in, but she kind of traced over it, which was really lovely. And it was also one that I was really excited to see, but I wasn't seeing it on any Waterstones book table, so this is probably my most like satisfying book of the weekend. Next we have Everless by Sarah Holland, and this was one of the only fantasy proofs that they had available, so I knew I wanted it. This was being given away by Bookmark, who is Hachette. Just look at the American cover of the proof, absolutely gorgeous, and then we just get this like plain white thing. So on the back it says, time is a prison, she is the key, alchemy, sorcery, blood, desire. Who knows what any of that means? Bookmark was one of the best places to pick up proofs because they did it really sensibly for Everless. They had people wandering around at specific times, I think they did a drop like every hour, and it was someone dressed in this like red hooded cloak, and if you went up to them and said something, they would give you a ticket, and on that ticket it would tell you an exact time, and my time was 2.31, so you had to go to the store at that exact time to pick up your proof, and it just felt like a really sensible exchange so that people weren't crowding around the table and creating some sort of horrible trampling situation. Also from Bookmark we picked up a copy of Moxie. It was the same deal, there was just a girl going round and you just had to go up to her and say that you're a Moxie girl and you got a cute little badge that you could exchange for this book, although you got to keep the badge. This is actually already available at WH Smith because it's one of the Zoella Book Club books, but I'm really excited to have a proof because it was the one that I've actually already read from this haul and I absolutely loved it. I think I want to do a separate review of it as well because it's just so amazing. I gave it five stars and I can definitely see myself rereading it. It's also already been picked up by Amy Poehler's production company to become a film and I'm going to be straight on that because this was just absolutely perfect. Next we have Water in May by Ismi Williams and Lumberjanes Unicorn Power by Mariko Tamaki. These two were on the welcome table and you could just pick them up for free. One is the story of a teenage pregnancy which is something I'm interested in and have read a few books about so hopefully this will be just as emotional. And this is one that Maddie read on her Kindle a few days before the event and then we found out it was going to be there and it's this like beautiful colour that matches the entire Lumberjanes collection so it's the perfect addition to our graphic novel shelf. Then we have The Exact Opposite of OK by Laura Stephen and this was the most like elusive proof of the whole event because they were only giving out 25 copies at a time and they would go before you'd even seen them, like blink and you'd miss it. So we tried to get this one a few times on Friday but weren't successful and then finally on Saturday we just dropped all of our things and ran when Lily told us that it was happening and so me and Kate went up to the store together and you had to take a photo with one of their Instagram cutouts and then once you showed the photo that you'd get a book and so we took the photo together not really knowing if we'd get two copies but we did and it was really lovely. This is also one that everyone was hyping just before Yalk so it was one that everyone knew about which was probably one of the reasons why it was hard to get. It's about a girl called Izzy who ends up having some explicit photos of her posted online after she has a relationship with a politician's son and all of the backlash that she received but it's also very strongly feminist and funny if any of the captions on the Instagram photos were anything to go by so I'm really looking forward to getting to this one especially because it's for fans of Louise O'Neill and Holly Bourne and I liked both of their books so hopefully this one will join their ranks. Next we have Otherworld by Jason Siegel actor and Kirsten Miller. Together they have worked on a middle grade series before but this is their joint collaborative YA extravaganza. So on the back it says the company welcomes you to Otherworld, the new generation of gaming, welcome to real life 2.0, are you ready to play? I have not yet entered into any of the gaming related novels that have been published recently. I'm super excited for Warcross by Marie Lu so I'll probably wait to read that one before I read this one. In the front Jason Siegel's written a little letter about why he decided to write this story and it was because he was inspired by the Oculus Rift and he thought if you could go anywhere you want why would you ever want to leave? So I think this is going to be really interesting and hopefully get a bit political and deeper than just an adventure story. Next we have 36 questions that changed my mind about you by Vicky Grant and this is all to do with these questions that you're meant to ask your potential partner to learn things about them really quickly and it was something that the characters did in The Sun is Also a Star by Nicola Yoon and this was one that was dropping at the hockey books table 
and no one really knew what they were giving away. All you had to do was go up to the store and like the first 10 people or something to say fish to them would get the book. So I have no idea how fish are relevant to the story, but we'll find out. Next I have The Cruel Prince by Holly Black. My most anticipated read of forever practically. I am so happy I had this, it's such an elusive book to get there as well. You can watch our day two vlog if you're interested to see how I got it, a link will be in the cards. I didn't realise until I read the back that the movie rights have already been picked up for this, so again it's another one that's like really hyped in the YA community. I thought this took place in the same universe as The Darkest Part of the Forest, but I am already like a hundred or something pages through and I'm pretty sure it's actually linked to Tithe. It's Holly Black and Fairies. I'll probably do a video review on this because I have some thoughts already and it's very different to what I was expecting and I'm kind of disappointed in it at this moment and I'm only saying that so you can adjust your expectations for it. It's very similar at the moment to the Tamlin and Feyre relationship from A Court of Thorns and Roses. Yeah, I'm hoping it resolves its problematic issues but I feel like I've finally just got into the plot after 100 pages of setting up this fairy world which I kind of already knew because I have read her other books so that was slightly tedious but yes I will be doing a full review on this when I finish it which will hopefully be soon. I need to stop putting it down. Next we have The Treatment by C.L. Taylor which is, surprise surprise, another psychological thriller. But it's also got a little sticker on it that says the most exciting YA debut of 2017, which is a lot to live up to. Again, we didn't really know what was happening with this one, we just joined a queue for it and they were just giving it out. They had a lot of copies and it's because the author was at the stand signing the books. So that was really cool that we have a signed copy of this one and it was also one that we picked up with Karis. So maybe we'll do a little book club with this one and see what we all think. Another very exciting release we have Invictus by Ryan Gordon and this was another bookmark one and to get it all you had to do was write on a post-it note what time you would like to live in and why. Ryan was also signing on that day so she's written make it count. The elevator pitch for this is Doctor Who meets Firefly. I'm pretty sure it's about thieving pirates who travel through space and I really didn't like it when Alexandra Bracken did it but I think I'm gonna love it with Ryan Gordon. Already heard some amazing buzz for it so I can't wait to get around to it and we're actually doing a buddy read with Lily Karis and Kate the 20 something so I can't wait to see what they think and maybe we'll do some like collaborative roundup of all of our thoughts at the end of it. Next we have a copy of The Beast's Heart by Leif Shalcross and this was one that we actually tried to get when they were doing a proof giveaway. You had to perform a waltz in front of the chapter 5 people and then they'd pick the top two to have a dance off and then get the book and so we didn't actually get it at that point and we were just like okay that's not gonna happen. So to get this one we actually decided to trade with someone that was also at Yalk on the Sunday. It's Beauty and the Beast from the Beast's perspective, but it doesn't really tell you that much about it on the back. It's just got this really curious back that says 1,455 open submissions, 22 million words, one acquisition. So that makes this book all the more intriguing, and I love fairy tale retellings of any kind, so hopefully I'll get to this one very soon. And then lastly, I have The Book of Ivy by Amy Ingle, and this was bought for me by Kate because Chapter 5 were doing a 3 for £10 deal, and none of us had changed, so she bought the first book and the second book and then she decided to just give me this one so thank you so much Kate, we should do a buddy read for it. This is a dystopian and I'm so surprised at how short it is. It's under 300 pages so that's kind of sketch already but it's one I've wanted to read for a really long time and I don't care about the reviews, I just want to read it. I've just, I've heard good things and I hope it lives up to those expectations. So we're very much looking forward to putting all of these books on our already very full shelves. <laughs> so we're going to film a quick bookshelf reorganisation video when we get all of those books onto those because this is already Already full so how's it all going on? You'll have to find out. Make sure to let us know if you want any individual reviews on any of the books that we have hauled today and tell us which ones you're most excited for. We'll leave a link in the cards and description to all of our Yalk Day vlogs if you're interested in seeing how we got these and signings and panels and things like that there's so much to enjoy about Yalk and it was such a great experience that we'd recommend it to everyone. We'll see you next time guys! Bye! Bye.